Hello there, and welcome to Let's Make a Health Connection, your local Health Connect podcast series in Vancouver, Washington. In this series, we interview and showcase the many healthcare providers and resources that are featured on our website, localhealthconnect.com. For those of you who don't know us yet, Local Health Connect is a hub where our community can easily search local resources and connect with providers for mind, body, and spirit health. Thanks for listening today. I'm Jennifer Barber, licensed clinical social worker in Washington and Oregon, and I'm happy to be part of our community of providers. Today we're talking to Olga Ward. She is a certified neurooptimal neurofeedback provider. She's the owner of Beaverton Neurofeedback LLC, located in Beaverton, Oregon. She personally benefited from neurofeedback and was impressed by this technology so much that she changed her earlier career trajectory and opened her own private practice in 2018 to help many more people in her community and beyond. Hi, Olga. Hi, thanks for having me, Jennifer. Oh, thank you so much for being here. Let's just jump into it and let people know what neurofeedback is. Yeah, a lot of people are familiar with it, but many more are not. So yeah, I I would just in very layman terms, this, even though there's a lot of science behind neurofeedback, but in very layman terms, I would say, think of it like um, brain training, training, training of the brain or physical therapy for the brain. Yeah, it it gives direct feedback to the brain about what the brain is doing so that the brain can tap into its own neuroplasticity and make positive corrections and changes. It sounds very technical and complicated. Can you give me an idea of how you do that? Yeah, so it is used to a very sophisticated machine. So I have equipment that was designed by a science team by the Zengar Institute. Um, And the particular technology I use is called NeuroOptimal. So you pronounced it very well. Oh, good. Um, I was wondering if I did that right. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. There's, there are many different styles of neurofeedback. um, And as the brain science and the technology are continuing to evolve, so, so are the different offerings that we we have a privilege of being exposed to. So NeuroOptimal is just a, a type of neurofeedback, but again, think of it as brain training. Um, yeah, and I use I use the specific equipment that I'm trained on. I did not create this equipment. I am um, simply the end user and a power user um, that I'm certified in. But the way it looks like is um, I attach special sensors to the person's ears and scalp and then those sensors are listening to the brain uh, what the brain is doing at the present time and giving direct feedback to the brain similar to like us looking in the mirror when we look in the mirror we can make adjustments automatically Um, so neurofeedback is feedback to to the brain wow that sounds fascinating Absolutely fascinating. Yeah. So as you are accumulating the the feedback, the sensors are doing what they're needing to do. Is there something showing on a computer screen or are there sounds going off? What what happens there? Yeah, yeah. Again, it probably uh, will slightly vary from technology to technology, but with NeuroOptimal, it's sound-based primarily. Um, usually people would listen to this kind of zenny very relaxed music Um, and as the sensors are picking up cortical activity or um, electrical activity from the scalp the music will momentarily skip or interrupt Um, and it happens many many times per second so some of it is people don't even catch but nevertheless it's still feedback and the brain is almost like has an ability to oh what just happened I did that, and it will have an opportunity to stop and sort of microanalyze its own activity and make a correction. Wow. Um, yeah, and the reason the reason this is happening is because a lot of our habits in the brains are formed over many years, and um, so we use the different techniques 
like mindfulness, for example, various mindfulness practices and meditation to sort of stop our ourselves in those familiar tracks. Maybe those are the tracks that don't serve us anymore, but we just kind of going on autopilot. We can mm-hmm. vow not to get angry or get whatever, but we still do it. It's just our body just kind of responds without bypassing that logical brain. And so that's what we are tapping tapping into, and it's, it's almost like um, beyond beyond the logical comprehension goes much deeper into the brain and interrupting those patterns that um, possibly not longer serving us and um, looking for better ways of operating, better ways of supporting us. Mm-hmm. And that's really interesting. As I'm listening with my, I have a, I'm a mental health provider, so I'm listening with my mental health provider brain, and I'm thinking, sure, for people who have uh, OCD or even maybe they're struggling with some addiction, is those are the patterns, right? The pathways in the brain says I must ruminate on this thought, and I must take this all the way to the most catastrophic thinking. These pathways are so strong. Is neurofeedback yeah. something that would help disrupt those? Yeah, absolutely. It, again, it um, it goes much deeper than like uh, verbally vowing not to think about something mm-hmm. again, <laughs> um, because you can you can vow all you want, but then you just kind of get trap back into that same old pattern it's almost like that groove becomes like a freeway and so mm-hmm. you go to automatically and you can't help yourself and then you beat yourself up and then you feel like why is why am I making this choice over and over again I know better mm-hmm. <laughs> um, that kind of thing so um, it happens so on the brain level um, it kind of disrupts and it gives more opportunities to make different choices and I um, I have seen people with, well, uh, tons of anxiety clients, but certainly uh, some have OCD as well. And what I've seen them report back to me, I say, it's oh, I have this familiar loop that I finish thinking about this thought and then it starts over and then mm-hmm. starts over. And with even sometimes it, just the first couple of sessions of neurofeedback they catch themselves that they, that loop is being interrupted and they're able to switch tracks more easily um, spontaneously um, and uh, it's almost like they're able to get redirected easily on their own and it just feels so liberating and and yes if they're seeing a therapist um, they're able to use those tools that they learned in therapy more effectively Mm -hmm. because their physiology is better supported to use those tools rather because you can read all the books you can go to all the classes you can go to certain um you can can do a lot of talk therapy uh, but if your kind of the downstairs brain kind of brings you right back you just you feel completely powerless Mm -hmm. (laughs) again yeah. Are, are there other reasons people might be interested in neurofeedback? Like who who would this be most suitable for? Yeah. Well, when I first discovered it for myself, it was from the book The Body Keeps the Score. Um mm, by Bessel, Bessel Dr. van der Kolk, yes. It's exactly. Yeah. Brain, mind and body in the healing of trauma. So um I have it on my desk right in front of me right now and chapter nineteen talks about neurofeedback in detail and it's it's titled applied neuroscience rewiring the fear driven mind with brain slash computer interface technology so it's just another tool we have lots of tools fortunately how to heal the brain and we know that trauma will directly affect the wiring of our brain and so um, this amazing technology was developed by clinical psychologists years ago is to help the brain's wiring and to help heal the brain from trauma from PTSD mm-hmm. um, so so it definitely helps with um, you know trauma it helps uh, also with things like concussions so when you have physical trauma to the brain um, not emotion not only emotional but physical, um, 
So anything that creates um, disbalance in the brain uh, will create unwanted side effects, right? Mm-hmm. Will create various um, labels and diagnostic diagnost- different diagnoses, mm-hmm. um, if you will. So neurofeedback supports the brain to come back to balance and to work at its highest and best potential. Uh, because if the brain is not working well, for some people, what that looks like is they have this squirrel brain um, where they can't focus. You know, some people may be diagnosed with ADHD and other people just have occasionally, you know, have these symptoms. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, it's the brain. It starts with the brain and the brain's wiring. Um, So some people also um, seek neurofeedback because they can't shut off the brain at night. Um, Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they might, you know, try this, that, and the other, or sometimes more, more commonly rely on medication. But if they're interested in, they're like, but it's my brain that just wouldn't turn off. What can I do about it? So people would use neurofeedback for that as well. Um, again, think of it like physical therapy for your brain. Um, when the brain is working well, you're not going to have insomnia. You're not going to be have OCD or your PTSD symptoms will improve um, dramatically. There's a lot of good things that can happen. And some people just simply do it for better memory, better focus, um, maybe better um, processing speed. Um, Some people just say like, oh, my brain works like 10 tabs are open, five Mm -hmm. of them are frozen, Mm -hmm. and I don't know where the music is coming from. (laughs) I so what can, um, yeah, I know it's funny, but it's so frustrating to live with the brain that's yes. working like a very slow operating system, right? Um, yeah. And so many issues can happen. You can be frustrating and, um, yeah, you can be un- completely unproductive, but also at night you might be just spinning, spinning, spinning and not be able to fall asleep. So that's that's usually... In, ineffective inefficient brain there for you mm-hmm. um so that's mm-hmm. that's so i know it's a long answer but um essentially if the brain is healthy you will you will do much better so whether you're you have a formal diagnosis or you just want your brain to work better like some people do it for sim- simply for peak performance um and kind of like you're going to the gym You don't have to have loads of injuries to go to the gym. You can just go to the gym because you want to go to the gym because Mm -hmm. that makes you feel good. So, and then um, neurofeedback is kind of used on a spectrum Mm -hmm. for serious problems um, like stroke recovery, PTSD, or just because you feel like you want to be, you know, quick and sharp and and, uh, reduce stress, all those good things that we all want. So who is this most suitable for? I'm thinking, obviously, adults, but can you also work with children using neurofeedback? Yes, absolutely. Well, it probably, um, I can't speak for all um, types of neurofeedback, Mm -hmm. um, but myself, I have, the youngest client I had was a two-year-old. I know it can be even used for, like, little babies, um, because the beauty of neurofeedback that you don't need to be verbal to use this type of therapy, um, right, to process. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's a pretty passive. That's kind of one of the benefits is you don't need to, like, if, um, but yes, absolutely. Children, it's completely safe and non-invasive to use on children. Um, usually children would get, um, parents would bring children to me for things like, ADHD or anxiety or emotional regulation um, Mm -hmm. when they're when they just kind of learning to regulate the emotions and maybe spending um, a a nice day in you know in tantrums Um, yes there's some coaching that could go hand in hand for the parents to help these children Um, so the parents are you know working well with uh, parenting well 
Um, however, sometimes you can be the best parent and the child is still struggling. Mm-hmm. Um, so neurofeedback can, can certainly be highly supportive. Wonderful. Um, Excellent. So I'm really curious if somebody has never had a neurofeedback session before and they call you to schedule their very first appointment, can you walk us through what that very first appointment would look like so that people know what they could expect? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I have a little um, also video on my website that kind of gives you glimpses of what the experience is like. Um, But generally, people can schedule the first appointment, I have them complete the um, online inta- intake ahead of time. And when they arrive, we have a little chat to clarify their goals and what's happening for them. I am able to answer questions. I'll show them the technology. Um, and then when, when we are ready, most of them are pretty excited to get started. Um, I would place them and they would be seated in a nice, comfortable uh, recliner, um, if, especially if it's an adult, I would re- I would kind of lean them back so they're almost like a nice and comfortable recline. I put a weighted blanket on them, and then I put the little sensors on them, and then they just kind of um, relax for the entire session. They're mm-hmm. listening to this music. The computer's doing its work. Um, a lot of adults end up kind of dozing off a little bit, so it's a pretty passive um uh, experience. Mm -hmm. Um, I do work a little bit differently with children who are kind of wiggly and uh, do not want to take a nap Mm -hmm. (laughs) like the rest of (laughs) us adults. Um, I would usually sit them up and uh, with the parent's permission, we can do like a a visual experience and so they can watch a movie during the session. Um, Of course, the session is usually 33 minutes long of the actual neurofeedback. So and mo- uh, my movies are like an hour and a half. So usually, when the when they're done with the session, they're asking their parents when they when can they come back because mm-hmm. probably want to continue watching the movie. <laughs> um, but That's yeah, a good trick. Yeah, good trick. Okay, wonderful. Um, can you tell us? You know, in that introduction, you said that you opened in two thousand eighteen. But before yeah. that, you, you decided to change your career trajectory. I'm curious, what happened to make you change your path? Um, and what brought you into the world of neurofeedback? Yeah, uh, big changes happened even before 2018. Um, uh, a few years before that, uh, my husband and I adopted um, one of our kids from uh, from foster care, and uh, even with the best kind of knowledge and all the training that we were given, um, we were s- struggling quite a bit with our daughter. Uh, she was eight at that time, mm-hmm. um, um, and she came to us on medication, and she and she did have a, a good therapist, so those things were in place. But we were still in crisis every day. It was just. Things were very, very bumpy. <laughs> um, and so that's when I was looking for, well, I don't want to introduce yet another um, medication to her. And the therapist already is doing a wonderful job. Um, what can I do uh, to support my child and myself <laughs> mm-hmm. um, that we can get, we all can get out of this fight and flight that's constantly uh, in our home. Oh, and so I learned about neurofeedback and I was completely fascinated that especially after reading and learning more about it from the book, The Body Keeps the Score, which is specifically about PTSD and trauma and what happens to the brain. Um, and I I had to try it. So, yeah. Um, and uh, once I once I saw that it was working, I, w- I actually used it on myself first because I was uh, starting to get so stressed out. Mm-hmm. I was not doing a good job parenting, even with all the knowledge and experience that I had and um, therapeutic support that I was given. I was just still not feeling like I was burnt out. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I had to take care for myself. Um, and I noticed the effects of the neurooptimal neurofeedback 
within the first couple of sessions. Um, and so at first I felt like I was just kind of calm, um, and relaxed and just sort of this unbothered feeling, um, very more grounded, um, able to use more more of my logical brain and not get so emotional and triggered all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but over time, I just found myself that the little things that used to irritate me or trigger me quite a bit were just not a problem. <laughs> and so I was able to use all the skills that I've learned from the trainings, from the books, um, from the, you know, um, therapy sessions, I was able to use them rather than just kind of be triggered and just fly off the handle, mm-hmm. if you will, or, mm-hmm. or or shut down. And so I was so enthralled with it that I had to research the heck out of it. Um, of course, I had to, um, I introduced it to my daughter and that was highly help, helpful. Mm-hmm. And then, um, and then I thought the world needs to know about this. <laughs> I need to like be it. able to yeah, it sounds yeah. like it changed your family. It totally did. Mm-hmm. It totally did. Wow. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's that's pretty incredible. What an incredible change. Yes, yes. So I'm curious if somebody wanted to work with you and learn mm-hmm. more, where can they find you? You said you had a website, and we also know that you have a profile on Local Health Connect. What is your website? Yeah. My website is Beaverton Neurofeedback, one word together, dot com. So, yeah, I always tell everyone, um, website, website, website. And I've mm-hmm. um, developed, um, personally developed and wrote uh, many um, blogs and articles. Um, that I, I wrote them with an intention to educate because not so many, not very many people are familiar with neurofeedback or understand how it works or... Um, what it's used for, that kind of thing. So I just wrote blogs to kind of answer a lot of those questions. So that's all on my website. Um, There's some video that explains what happens in the session. Frequently asked questions also are there. And um, and people can also schedule with me on through the website as well. That's so great. Okay, great. Uh, Do you have anything else you'd like people to know about you and your business? Yeah. Um, one. So, for those who are not too super local, I uh, feel like, oh, maybe Beaverton is a little bit out of reach. But I really want to learn more. Or really, I really need this. Um, I offer also um, rentals. Neuro um, neurofeedback equipment can be used at home, and I train people how to use use the machine and provide full technical support and, and guidance. Um, so they can always um, rent the equipment and use it at home as well. And I have that on information on my website. Great. Um, that would be very convenient. Very convenient. That's the way I started for my family and then ended up purchasing my own equipment and becoming a certified provider uh, because I just did not want to give up the machine. <laughs> That's so great. We are lucky to have you in the community. And just from my own personal experience, it feels to me like we continue to hear more and more about neurofeedback and just the awareness that more neurofeedback providers are are coming into the community. And so it, it is wonderful that you're here today educating us about what it is and how it can help. And I just want to thank you once again. Yeah, absolutely. And I just, if I can add one more thing uh, really quick, I know that um, you, Jennifer, have a passion to support um, first uh, responders. And now we're living the uh, era of COVID. There's yes. a lot of um, a lot of medical, as well as mental health providers are pretty stressed out and burnt out. Yes. And there's shortage of resources. Um Often these providers need support themselves, so um, neurofeedback can be highly supportive and effective. Um, but you don't. I, I want to kind of emphasize that you don't have to have a a particular diagnosis to to see the benefit of just 
even just two or three sessions will do the trick to kind of bring your whole central nervous system down and you feel you feel better <laughs> you just feel noticeably but better within yes. the first few sessions Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's a really good piece for all of our uh, frontline medical professionals to hear that um, even the idea of being able to come home from work from a long shift or many shifts and to have that equipment mm -hmm. and your knowledge available to them um, to just bring that nervous system back down. Absolutely incredible. Yeah. Thank you so much yeah. for offering this to our whole community, but also pointing that out for our, our very stressed out medical professionals right now. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Jennifer, for having me. Yes, thank you, Olga. You have a wonderful day. Thank you again for listening to Let's Make a Health Connection. Find us on the interwebs at localhealthconnect.com. Also search for us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links and show notes for this interview are available on our podcast page. I really enjoyed putting these interviews together, and I hope you made a health connection. We'll talk again next time. Let's Make a Health Connection, copyright 2021, all rights reserved, is the exclusive property of MBS Therapy, LLC, a Washington-based company. Local Health Connect is inclusive and does not endorse any political or religious group. Thank you again for listening, and we'll see you next time on localhealthconnect.com.